Okay, so today I will talk about uh, robotics and uh, haptics that have something really in common that we'll see in a moment uh, in a wearable perspective. So we will talk about mainly wearable uh, technology for robotics and haptics. Everything is really um, focused on the uh, quality of life. So we will try to find, of course, I will talk about the technology, but the idea is to apply this kind of technology to uh, patients, for example. Okay, so we will see how uh, patients of uh, stroke or uh, paraplegic uh, um, subject. Okay, so um, here are the, of course, I'm presenting a work uh, done my research uh, group. I'm leading a group of 15 people, more or less, that works uh, between IAT and, uh, and uh, Siena. Uh, at, top, uh, at the top, you can see the two buildings. The red one is in Siena. Uh, the lower one is uh, in uh, Genova, where we have the laboratory. Actually, you see all this kind of, uh, of pictures, and then we will see in a moment what these pictures means. These are shot from my lab, and there is something in common here, no? So you can see there is more or less always a hand. So because we are focusing on, uh, on hand, and actually we deal, so why hands? So if you, if, you look to, if you look to me, I should look like more or less like a hand, right? Because if you look to a finger, a fi at, at least from a robotic uh, point of view, a finger has uh, two degrees of freedom in this joint. So you can move the finger here and the finger in this other direction. And you can move this other joint. Okay, so you have basically three joints for each finger. If you look to my arm, the arm is as more or less the same structure. So you have the shoulder with two degrees of freedom, and then you have the sorry, the, the, the yes, the shoulder, and then you have this uh, this uh, joint that has one degree of freedom, very similar to to a finger. And if you look to the leg, the leg is more or less the same of an arm. So you have uh, this part is very similar to the so the leg is the same structure of, of the arm. So basically, if you to look to if you look to my body, my body is like a palm. Okay, two fingers, two other fingers. Okay, if you forget about the hand and the foot and the feet, uh, and then you have maybe something like a thumb that is my head. No, so the complexity of the body in terms of joints that you need to control with your sensory motor system is very similar to the hand. Okay, so by the end, in some way, is the synthesis or the synthesis of the more complex things that we need to control for, from a sensory motor point of view. And this is also one of the reasons why the end is the focus of our, of our research. Uh, of course, the hand uh, moves things, but does also something very interesting, that is the touch. So we are uh, a very important expertise in my laboratory in technology for touch. And so we will talk about uh, manipulation and, uh, and touch, because when I do something with uh, a glass of water, uh, at the beginning, I try to, you know, to touch him, to understand where it is. Okay, so then I use my tactile uh, perception system, and then I move it, okay? So we will talk about technology for touch and technology for motion of the hand. Then what's the, the, uh, the, final, uh, the final goal of my talk? So basically, what I would like really to talk about is the concept of, of augmentation. No? So because when you talk about, uh, when you think about robots, you always think about something that is substituting you. No? Is taking your job, is uh, taking, uh, so doing something very dangerous, or, you know, is something that is doing something at your place. But the perspective of this talk is completely different, is something that I refer to like the concept not of substitution, but augmentation of, or of enhancement of our uh, abilities. Of course, all of us have a, a phone or a computer, and this is already an augmentation, no? Because our cognitive system in some way is augmented because I can remember more uh, pictures, I can talk more language because the phone is translating online for me. So it's already something that is augmented. But if you look to our, you know, this picture is like we are augmenting only our brain in some sense is for the brain represents the cognitive aspect. There is nothing yet on the, uh, on the scientific uh, panorama that uh, gives us the augmentation of the body. 
Because if you think about something robotics at your body, you always think about the prosthesis. Like prosthesis of the hand is not an augmentation. It's a substitution. So you don't have your hand and use a robotic hand. You don't have your leg and you have a robotic leg. Maybe you have an exoskeleton, but still you are using two legs to walk. What I'm talking about is something that goes beyond the body schema and try to augment the number of limbs or the, the perception system that you work with in order to do more things with the same augmented body, okay? So just to be more concrete, I will have uh, an arm or uh, some robot that is uh, you know, on my body wearable or somewhere here, that is not something that is doing something with me, but is uh, my third limb. Okay, so I, I perceive it like part of my body, and I will be in a moment uh, to explain you the concept. Okay, so we will arrive at the end of the talk to understand what is the augmentation in terms of the number of limbs we can control. Okay, good. Of course, I'm an healthy human. Okay, I have two legs and uh, two limbs. But maybe I can be an impaired human, that is very interesting for me. An impaired hum human, for example, because of, of a stroke, I cannot move my arm anymore. And uh, I want to use this concept of augmentation to let impaired humans to recover the functionality of uh, the limbs that he had before. But we will go there in just in a moment. Before going in, the, in, this, uh, in this concept, uh, if, if I want to, to, you know, to augment my body, there is the motion, but there is also the, the sensory motor system, so the perception system, the tactile uh, technology. So there will be interfaces that are based on uh, optics that will help me doing this. So I will focus in the first part of my talk on the optics technology. So for a moment now, forget about the augmentation and focus about touch technology. What is tactile technology? Tactile technology is uh, something, is a matter of uh, uh, applying the forces of, on, on your body, okay? This is, for example, a robot on the right that is uh, uh, applying uh, a force on your, uh, on your finger through the pen, simulating the presence of a sphere. If you have a real sphere, you touch a sphere, you apply a force on the sphere, and the sphere reacts with a force against you. So basically, the robot is replicating the force field of a virtual sphere by letting you touch this object. So we let you the, understand the consistency of this ball, okay? <laughs> clear? This is probably even more clear. For example, this is a, a, a virtual ball. This is a virtual hand that I can perceive with my helmet in a virtual reality, okay? And this is a robot, okay, that is on, on my finger that is replicating the forces of uh, uh, the interaction of the finger with the sphere on my, uh, on my finger. You can see in a moment here, no? So this robot is replicating the forces that comes from the interaction with this virtual ball. So I feel the virtual ball, not only because I see it in my helmet, but I also feel the consistency thanks to this wearable uh, robot technology, okay? So it's a robot. So there, there are three motors. There is a platform that orients like the tangent plane to the contact point and pushes against my, my, my finger by replicating the force. This was really interesting. And, uh, you know, we were developing uh, many uh, devices. Just to give you uh, an idea that is very nice to tell you, this is some take home message for you. Uh, that uh, before this, this was invented by us, we have a patent here, and one of the startup comes exactly from this patent, okay? So before this invention, so the technology for uh, tactile interaction was just a robot. So like before, no? Was a, was a robot like this that was showing the forces of a virtual ball, but to a real robot, okay? Like this. 
was not wearable. So you were confined in this workspace. So the technological paradigm shift that we were, were proposing here is basically we went from grounded robotic device to something very wearable. That is a plus. It's exactly what happened from the speakers that you use uh, at your house uh, to listen your music against the headphones that you uh, use to listen your music while walking. This was a, a patent by Sony Walkman. I mean, maybe you remember the cassette, but the cassette was not the real, um, the real technological jump was to go from, uh, you know, room, confined workspace to something wearable. And this was a technological push because I cannot use the, the uh, long playing discs anymore because I cannot bring all those vinyl discs with me. So then the people started inventing the cassette and then the hard disk, the iPod, and then the SSD. So there was the fact that we went from uh, limited workspace to wearable, opened the, 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 the way to the technological improvement that we have in our computers, that is SSD, okay? That is given, mainly motivated by the wearability. So wearability is uh, something really, really important that makes a lot of uh, uh, technological questions that you need to answer and provides um, a lot of uh, um, nice results that you have to find inside. Okay, so we went, thanks to this highly wearable device, we went through the design of, uh, you know, five fingers, not only one, so you can interact with the virtual reality environment. And we were uh, using this device to do uh, tactile interaction. Actually, there was a, a so huge interest in uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 technology that we were, in some sense, forced to to make a startup and to make the patent because there was a i mean we went to present this uh, to present this technology to facebook uh to sony because facebook is the owner of the oculus the the helmet of the uh for virtual reality and now they are pushing a lot through uh this uh, uh, metaverse where there is all these uh, avatars that uh, they are trying to to invest a lot there is a lot of investment, actually. Microsoft, for example, is going completely with their office suite in the in the metaverse to have the sense of three-dimensionality of Excel and whatever they can make with this, uh, this thing. Virtual reality is something that we like, but is something that we don't like too much with respect to augmented reality. So what really, uh, what I really uh, believe is that virtual reality is much easier than augmented reality. So augmented reality is something that I say, because virtual reality confines me, you know, in a, in a virtual world that I don't like really too much personally. Okay. I like more to be here and to have some of the students of my lab present here that they can see through the augmented reality. And maybe I can also go here and shake the hands with some virtual uh, reality presence avatar. But there is uh, you here that is present, so I can touch with you and they can touch the virtual one. But if I want to touch him, and if I want to touch also the virtual reality guy, I have to leave my fingertip palm free. Because if I have something on my fingertip, then I, it stops uh, the perception. So if I go, I, I mean, I can touch, you know, the, 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 the suppose that I'm a doctor, okay, and I have to do palpation, okay, and I want to visit both, for example, because they are brother, for example, then I can palpate, sorry, the, 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 the nodule, okay, here, and I can do this virtually here, okay, to the, to the other reality. But to do this, I cannot have, you know, I cannot have a thimble design. So we thought that uh, if you want to go from virtual reality to augmented reality, to need to you need to change the concept of the interface, and you need to go from the fingertip device to the ring concept. So we moved the device from here to there, and uh, we designed, uh, you know, the ring. Uh, now the ring is very good uh, because it's going uh, through vi pressure, vibration, and heat. Um, in practice, this ring or this thimble has technology inside that are uh, actuators that uh, stretch the skin. Because when you touch something, you the first thing that you do, you deform your skin. So then you need uh, virtually, I mean, in real 
augmented reality or virtual reality, you need a motor that squeezes your skin. Then you feel the vibration different from the wall to the uh, textile of my of my jacket. Uh, and then you need some, you know, some vibration technology. And then also you feel the um, the thermal impedance of the material. You feel the heat, basically. Okay. So we have some actuator here. So this is very, uh, very interesting. This is the ring design. I don't want to go into these details. Of uh, you see that if you have a ring, you can easily uh, type on your keyboard and do whatever you want. And uh, this is, for example, one of the first. Uh, work that we did that was featured on Science magazine that uh, declared that this was the first device that was able to do augmented reality in uh, touch, because augmented reality was typically done with the visual feedback. This is, for example, uh, you can see here, I am uh, grasping a real object, so I'm feeling the weight of the real object through my skin finger, my, my bare finger, Tip. Then I have the ring technology that allow me to feel the virtual object on top of it. So I can feel the weight. So basically, I can hold this glass, I can feel with the virtual water, and I can feel the weight of the virtual water thanks to the rings that apply forces on my finger. Okay. So I can augment. For example, if we are doing a prototype of uh, phones. I can have the shell of the phone and I can put all the virtual weights inside and I can feel the balance, whatever. Or I can feel the texture, for example. I can have, uh, for example, we are working with IKEA. IKEA is uh, now opening uh, uh, the stores in Rome. There is a store in Rome, in a square. I don't remember the name. Why is virtual the, the, the worker or the, the weight? I will tell you. Real. No, I will no, for example, I can do it. No, if I have the ring. Mm -hmm. And if I have an helmet, I can see the real glass. And plus, I can see the virtual water coming in. Okay. And then I can, I can see it, but I can also feel the weight because of my technology on the ring. In remote. Even here, even here, or in remote, but even here. No, I have the helmet. So if I want to see your brother here, that is somewhere else, I need an helmet that is transparent because I need to see you. And then I need some, uh, you know, uh, super impression of this on this lens. It's all lens. There are many devices that shows me here. So when I see you, it disappears. When I see here, it appears here. In the same case here, if there is no virtual water, I just have turned off my rings. If I put the virtual water, then I turn on the motors and I feel it. Okay. Good. Like in this case, no. In this case, you know, I'm uh, uh, grasping this object. And I'm feeling the weight of the object with my finger and the weight of the blue object with the, the technology on my that is stretching the skin, basically. Okay. Then uh, um, you know, this is this, these are the two situations. This is the virtual reality that uh, when you have an helmet, then you can use the thimble device because you don't have to touch anything. When you have an OLENS, so you are uh, in an augmented reality scenario, you need to really touch things, plus you need to feel something. But, uh, you know, augmented reality, for me, is a field that is very important to try to understand. Facebook is going before in virtual reality because it's simpler than augmented reality. Because in virtual reality, you have, you know, everything virtual is there. If you want to go augmented reality, you need the real reality plus the virtual one, and you need to mix them. So you need the same reference frames and whatever. So it's much more difficult. But for me, it's the future, because we don't want to live isolated by an unaugmented uh, scenario. OK. So this is uh, then uh, we made uh, uh, a startup. And uh, this startup is really, ah, I wanted to tell you about, about IKEA. So IKEA is opening uh, the stores in Rome or in, uh, I think, even in Venice. But in downtown, is small. You cannot have the whole uh, you know, materials, the whole sofa, but just one, one table, no? And then this table, for example, you want to change the material, OK? So then they have just one table. You put your ring on top on your hand. And then when you touch, you can change the feeling of the material. For example, if it's metal, you change the, the, the you actuate the thermal uh, module and you let them feel colder because it's 
uh, its uh, metal part, or you can feel the vibration of this wood, or you can feel uh, some other material. So they have, uh, you know, they they, they have a, a prototype with a neutral material, and you can add with this ring the material on top of it. And this can be done uh, even with the uh, textile and uh, many other things. This is, for example, uh, uh, the startup. And this is a scenario, one of uh, the, the client of the startup of, uh, other than uh, IKEA is Medtronic. This is a, a, um, a virtual reality environment in a, like a, a wet uh, lab where they are uh, dealing with the uh, vials and uh, that are cold, uh, hot, and uh, you feel uh, many other things. So they are trying to do something like uh, training or, uh, or whatever. Mm, this is something that we are dealing uh, with. Another interesting thing that uh, we can use with this uh, uh, tactile technology is what they call remote touch. So you can touch here. Why I, can, why I would like to touch something here? Because for example, what's your name? Fine. Yes. Rebecca. For example, Rebecca is the doctor, and she's at the hospital, and uh, she's uh, I'm a patient, and I have some problem of the, the nodules here at, my, at, the, at the neck. Okay, so then the Rebecca is, says, uh, okay, don't come to the hospital because of the COVID, whatever. Stay at home, and we do some like a televisit. She talks with me. I will feel blah blah blah. She looks. Let me look to your. Uh, neck, and then uh, she says, uh, uh, let's do telepalpation. Then I have a ring or a thimble on my finger. I touch my nodule, okay? And you feel what I'm touching too. So at your hands, you have the, you have the feeling of my tactile interaction with the nodule. And I will show it here, for example. Here, this is me on the left touching something, and this is Rebecca, where is displayed on a finger what I'm touching on the other side, okay? So this is this kind of remote touch that can be used at the layer of a telepalpation in the televisit of telemedicine that is very popular uh, right now. We were using it in, uh, you know, many kind of experience. You can think about, basically, we are talking about digitalizing the touch, no? So I can also use this, uh, I cannot also... I don't want to probably transmit it in real time, no? Maybe I want to interact with my daughter that was just born, and then I have my uh, thimble or ring, and they can, you know, record voice, video, and tactile record the interaction there, and keep it in my computer, and uh, uh, having the tactile visual and audio perception after 10 years, for example, no? Or it can be used for teaching, for example. You are probably a super expert surgeon, and you want to teach me how to, you know, uh, distribute the forces at your fingers while you do the surgery, okay? The open surgery, for example. And then this is showed me because I am a her student, his student, and is uh, showing at my hand what was the pressure somewhere, okay? So many, many applications you can think about. We used it in COVID, uh, like uh, to let people that are uh, in Milano, actually, the startup was using this technology to let people uh, interact tactilely. For example, if I was the, uh, the son of my father that was uh, at the hospital, I mean, while doing uh, Skype or uh, FaceTime or WhatsApp uh, video call, then I could have uh, uh, touched myself and uh, he was uh, uh, feeling the temperature, the pressure, uh, whatever. Okay, very good. We apply this also, we have been founded by, uh, by uh, Intuity Surgical because the, the, in, uh, in 2015, actually, um, we had a grant by Intuity Surgical that is the surgical robot that does not have the tactile feedback. And we were having on top, on the top of the robot, of the surgical robot, we were having that module that was squeezing my skin by simulating the tactile interaction on the, uh, on the organ by letting the surgeon feel things. Now, Serena, I see GB, GB, Plus Sirsla. How can so what's you know what's what's the connection between this technology that I was talking about and the heart that Professor Zakinia is studying since uh, years? And this is uh, the you know the spark that started uh, um, last year 
during uh, science in the city that we had this uh, this idea. So basically, the roughly the main idea is uh, is uh, is this one. So we were able to stimulate to stress tissues, cutaneous tissues, because of the virtual reality, because of the augmented reality, because of the teleportation, whatever. But there is a need also to stimulate some tissue for some other reason. So we, where is the where is the you know the 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 confine? How do you say confine? I mean, the boundary between the two fields. So I'm doing mainly mechanical stimulation. Professor Zakinia is doing mainly, mainly biology. Okay, so it's mechanical biology exactly the boundary where we need to put our energy together. And what's the reason of uh, uh, mechanobiology has been uh, studied by uh, Professor Zakinia since years. So there, there is a clear evidence where uh, in, uh, that in the earth there is no uh, proliferation uh, of, uh, of, uh, of cells for some reason. And one of the possible, uh, these cells are also uh, not only the normal uh, tissue cells, but also tumors. One of the possible reasons is because the earth is, you know, uh, uh, is a tissue that is, that is feeling a stress given by this cardiomyocyte uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the heartbeat, basically. So the idea is that why don't we use our technology to apply the same mechanical stress that is on the heart on another tissue that is not the heart, of course, because the heart is moving by itself. But we want to imagine a melanoma here, okay? And imagine that we show in our research that this is intuition, no? Imagine that this mechanical stress is beneficial in the sense that the proliferation of the tumor goes down, basically. Okay, why not? I mean, I'm, instead of applying the stress at the fingertip, I apply the stress, simulating the heart, basically, to my melanoma and try to uh, feed the cancer by trying to reduce the level of growth that he had normal. I mean, and this is, you know, something that we really want uh, to deal with. So to go on, to go from VR, AR, telepalpation to something that is to try to replicate the mechanical stress, the heart is uh, naturally, physiologically applying to the heart in some other part of the body, because we hope that is beneficial, is good to fit the two. Okay, so this is the boundary where, and this is also the reason why I'm more frequently here. Okay, and uh, and for me it's really a pleasure to try to you know to go. So there is always a trend in my lab that try to uh, because I also think, and we had an interesting discussion yesterday with you that uh, any application for uh, I, I always give this this example. If I if I am uh, if I don't see very well because I'm hypovedente, okay? Then uh, uh, I typically, I use, uh, I, if I was there, okay, where there is uh, Andrea, uh, that place, then probably I was looking to the watching, I mean, looking to, the, to this, uh, to this uh, slide by using a tablet, okay? So maybe I was zooming on the tablet to see better the, the, the text, okay? What's the tablet? The tablet is something uh, super useful for us, for every subject, but it's very useful for people that cannot see very well. So it's an example of technology that has been developed for healthy subject, but is super useful for uh, people with problem at the at site. Okay. So what I want to say is that when you develop a technology, maybe you target some people with some illness, but you always have to think about the application for healthy subject because then the technology becomes pervasive, the cost goes down, and the performance performance goes up because maybe there are more people that will use it. Okay. And this is for me perfect because the same technology is going to VR, AR, but also to telemedicine and hopefully to the cancer uh, mechanotherapy treatment, for example, in some way. There is some other challenge, for example, because with these wearables, we can uh, deal with the only with the external tumor. So now we are thinking about how to go inside to try to, to feed the cancer uh, for internal organs. And there are ideas we can discuss uh, this later on. 
Okay, now uh, we were using, uh, uh, of course, we were, this is just another example where uh, the optics can be really uh, useful is, uh, for example, for, uh, for, uh, for blind. Okay, why for blind? Can I use it? Can you help me? No, okay. Suppose that I'm blind, that I'm blind okay? Yeah. And so, so, so then uh, is the volunteer that has been from a railway station to, I mean, it's a little bit downtown, from railway station downtown. So I call him and then I say, please help me. So he's probably the volunteer, the volunteer. and then he, he takes me here and uh, you know, he brings me somewhere, okay? So basically I have his hands here and the, I'm using his sight because I cannot see, okay? So the sight and his hand here. Thank you. Yeah. Now, the idea is that, okay, Trieste is more or less okay, but if we were in uh, Rome, hmm, coming to uh, yes. Roma Termini from I don't know where and bringing me to the Colosseo, mm -hmm. it will took you probably four hours from your house, no? So this means that probably 20 minutes of support in my life as a, a, a blind will cost him four hours. Then I said, okay, but now why instead of building uh, uh, the, another stick technological that we have this blind looking like Tesla, like uh, radar, uh, cameras, uh, uh, you know, whatever. Why don't we do something for him, for the volunteer and not for the blind? So then the idea, this was the idea of tactile angel. So the idea was to, to, took the volunteer, to keep the volunteer at home. So if we keep the volunteer at home, I need a camera on my body that brings the, the video back to home. And I need, I, I'm the blind, I need, key sense on my body that is given by the technology that we are developing. So the tactile technology in this case is, is replacing the action go right, go left. And you can see this just in a second, in a moment, this is him that is driving me from home and he, he wants me to turn on the left. Just have a look, focus on, the, on this uh, uh, right index finger. Now, look now, tap, tap, arrives the signal, it, is a ta -ta. it arrives the signal on the red hand and it goes there. So we could have used an headphone like go right, go left, but the blind people don't want anything apart listening the city in their ear because it's the only sense that they have. So they want to be guided by touch. Another application of, uh, I don't want to go into these details, but for example, we were using this kind, kind of uh, uh, technology, for example, to help people in the industry to avoid uh, interacting, you know, two meters distance from, from COVID. If I am, you know, uh, somewhere working, I don't think too much. And uh, so we were using this technology. These were blindfolded to simulate uh, a lower level of attention. No? And this technology could have also been used to keep people far away, orienting right and left. This is the reason, why the reason? Because for any application we have in health domain, we always try to target an application in a non-health domain, more on interfaces and things like that. Okay, so then we also apply this technology to Parkinson. I don't want to go into these details, but before, from the, from the, from the, instead of guiding right and left, we were helping people to, you know, to guide the, 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 the pace of the steps. You see on the left, they were, uh, this is a Parkinson subject that was working like this. The anklets were turned off. You see what happens when we turn on the tactile stimuli at the feedback, at, at the anklet. It, it becomes, normal because we were interfering with the sensory motor system of the human thanks to this technology okay and also in this case uh, we we found uh, an application for healthy subject because of this dual uh, target it is social jogging i can go jogging with serena so and then uh, it means that i i i, I start uh, and she runs more than me but we, since it's digital we can regulate so we can have the feeling of uh, going together, but she runs more than me. Because when uh, I, uh, I, have a, I have an accelerometer under my uh, shoes, and then when I touch the floor, uh, the impact is registered, digitalized, and is sent to her shoes, so or to her hand. 
So she feels my steps on her legs. And if she naturally synchronizes with my step, it's like, you know, it's like when we go together, we try to, you know, to have one post to the other, we synchronize the step, basically. And we can do this remotely because I'm feeling your step and we can synchronize, okay, from Siena and uh, Trieste. But because you are not running more than me, the system can just scale down the frequency of your uh, 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 pace and then I can have the feeling to go with you even if you are running more. Well, what I feel. You feel a vibration. You feel a vibration. And then uh, uh, you basically, we proved and we published that this vibration uh, is a sort of a command for your sensory motor system. It's like if I do uh, 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 you synchronize with it. You basically synchronize. And we are also now working with the uh, physiologists in, uh, in Genova, and they are trying to use uh, this kind of technology to, uh, to make the training of uh, runners, of expert runners. For example, if you in a professional uh, race, you cannot use the music because it's a sort of a doping. doping. This is not should be doping, but it's the same effort. So maybe we can still win some uh, race, because even if we are doped with uh, that technology. Okay, now let's go to the last part of the talk, that is the augmentation, no? It's very important. Then we will see now also a connection to what I just said before. There is also, then I, I want also to give you a, 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 an element of, uh, of creativity, no? That I always say is that, uh, you know, if all the people are going in this direction, we just try to turn a little bit to go in the other direction. For example, for the blind, a lot of people for the blind were working on the stick. And we said, no, we cannot build the, the, the stick number uh, 130 with some different technology, but it's still a stick. So we work more on the, on the volunteer. Also in this case, there has been a lot of researchers. If you look, if you turn on ADB, you see a prosthesis, more or less, no? uh, implanted uh, a prosthesis. But, uh, you know, prosthesis, it's okay. But uh, how many amputee we know around? I mean, I personally don't know any amputee. Hmm? I, I know a lot of people that cannot move the hand because of a stroke or because of a spinal cord injury, maybe on a, on a bicycle, an accident, whatever. And for that case, it's really difficult to think about the prosthesis, you know, because the, 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 the limb is there, the, the, the hand is there, it's not working, but it's there. So we could not think about that technology. For me, it was crazy. Why? There was no, uh, I mean, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people were having stroke with problems on the hand, but a lot of effort was on prosthesis. On the other side, I mean, okay. So then by looking to, uh, you know, there is a, uh, you know, you know how we got this idea? We got this idea basically because I, 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 this was really strange. No? So for me also creativity is to go a little bit, uh, you know, side of what other people do and also to be courageous in saying stupid things. So if you have some stupid thing in your brain, it's better to have the courage to say something. You know how we started Serena? Is it, it was like this, eh? I was looking to my body, oh, it's clear, no? So it's two eyes, two ears, two legs, two hands, two, uh, I don't know, what it is. I, I, whatever. But if you look to my hand, it's only one thumb. Hmm. You know, it's not symmetric, no? So then I was saying, okay, why don't we build an extra thumb, okay, a sixth finger to make the hand. We, we, we were quite stressed. Another, another trick is that we really try to be recognized in the scientific uh, you know, community. You need to be a little bit obsessive with things that you do because we, so we were studying hands. So hands was hands, 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 always hands, no? So, Thinking about hands, one of the things that came to my mind is that why don't we have an additional thumb? For example, we can change the strategy of grasping the bottle. No? So then we saw this stupid thing, it was really stupid, okay, to study something. Then, then I realized that this could be really useful for people that could not open the end anymore. 
Because if you cannot open the end anymore because of a stroke, you still have an additional time and you can still grasp, you can still grasp, I mean, now this is a robotic, right? You can still grasp an object, okay? So we invented this extra thumb, and this extra thumb is, uh, is here. This is a very preliminary device that led this, uh, this subject to, uh, to, grasp, to grasp things. Okay, so this is a, a, a more interesting version of the, of the finger. This is a soft robot that adapts to any shape. For example, this is, the, this is the reason why we are able to manipulate silicon because we are going from rigid robotics to soft robotics. The black part of the, the black part here that we designed is basically the same technology that we are using for RoboHeart, uh, even if it's pneumatic actuation, okay? And so they are able now to do everything with uh, this, uh, because if you, if you have a closed hand, you cannot do by manual uh, task. You cannot uh, cut the, the bread. You cannot peel. Uh, you cannot gla gra grasp a glass, for example. And if you don't have a working hand, you typically keep your hand here, and the, the, the muscle of your arm goes down because you don't use anymore. Having an extra finger makes really uh, everything interesting. You see here, you can peel the, the apple, uh, uh, you know, many, many tasks, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are obsessed by wearability, and this is a wearable robot, of course. No? And uh, then we realize this thumb like a bracelet that stays under your jacket and becomes a finger on when it's needed. Even this is a patent, is a patent. And, uh, you know, there is a, just, I want to, I don't want to, yeah, I, I want just to show you this video for the interface. For example, this is a subject, uh, give me two minutes of your attention now. This is a, a subject that because of the ictus, uh, of the stroke, sorry, uh, as hypostasia, he cannot feel anything on the end. He cannot move the end. He cannot feel anything on the arm. Okay, so when the robot pushes against the glass, against the hand, it does not perceive anything, okay? So it has, it has no idea about if there is enough force to lift the object, okay? Because there is no idea of the, the tangential force, okay? So we put sensors on the robot and we connected that, that, that sensors to the tactile technology on the ring that I showed you before. I showed you before a ring that stimulates the finger. Now, the stimulus is connected to the sensor on the, on, the, on, the, on the robotic finger. Now, if I push here for the physics, this is the robot finger, right? If I push here, the force on the robotic thumb is exactly equal to the force on the other side. Okay, so by measuring this, I'm measuring the force that is not able to feel anymore. And then I remap that force on the healthy part of the body. So I am rewiring with these wearables the sensory motor system of the human by adding an extra thumb and by mapping the perception system thanks to my haptic technology on some other part of the body. So this is the real augmentation. So I am adding an extra limb that was not anatomically present before, that is functioning, that is bringing back the human to the, to the healthy level, because I don't, it's not a superhuman, but it's just recovering what is missing. And this is the concept of augmentation. So we go beyond our body schema to recover the functions that we were uh, missing too. Okay, now there are many other uh, things that I want to talk about, but uh, I will want to be really, we are using EMG, many other things for the interface. This is also very interesting. You know, this I want to show you because the, 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 the noise is very interesting here because you feel, you, feel, you feel the motor of Ferrari. So both of them are basically, you know, what's the real, what's the real, uh, I will show you what's the, What's the main problem here? Just to just to tell you what's the what's the the problem that each one of us will have in the future. No, for example, here the human 
is has the agency of the finger. So it controls it. It's under my control, no? So the robot is me. I decide when to move and I feel it. It's not, but it can be also autonomous. It can have a camera. As I get close, it closes. I don't do anything, okay? It can be completely autonomous or can have the partial agency of it, okay? So this is exactly the same difference that we will have. Huh? And this is something that, you know, maybe someone says, okay, Domenico, I won't, you know, I don't want to care about it. Just let it be autonomous. I don't want you know to keep the control of the of the of the finger. Just keep it and do it with the robot without asking me to control it. It's exactly the same difference that you will have either in the Tesla, where the car is doing everything for you, or in a super autonomous Ferrari, where you are in the control of the wheel. Okay, so it's still both of them have the same you know, amount of technology, but one chooses the completely autonomous stuff, you don't control anything. On the other side, you have the agency of part of the robot, if the car is a robot. Now, this means that uh, to, what are the tasks that you want to, in the future, if you have an augmentation, what you want to keep the control of, what you want to have the autonomous of. You know, it's, it's something on your priority. If it's something that I care, because I'm an artist and I want to paint with the tree uh, paintbrush, I want to keep control of it. If uh, I'm not a chef, I will just eat because I want to eat, then the, the robot can do it autonomously and cook for me, okay? So it's, it's really a matter of, so we will be in control of things that we really like to do and we keep the other things completely free. No? For example, if I want to go uh, come here and reading a book, then Tesla. If I like to drive because it's for me an hobby, you know, this is the, the kind of things that we are when we mix with an artificial intelligence that can be either artificially cognitive intelligence or sensory motor system, then the trade-off between the things that the, uh, the AI does for you and the things that you want to keep the control of is something that goes uh, to the uh, level of pleasure of things that you like to do. But it's, uh, it's an important thing for me. Okay, this also became, uh, uh, became a startup because of the patent. Uh, this startup, uh, now this is the, the engineered version of the, of the extra finger. I brought it to, this was in Las Vegas in 2020, actually before the COVID. And uh, this is very interesting. And uh, these are the publications that are based, uh, that also shows the level of collaboration in my, in my group and I need to thank all of them. This is a more recent uh, paper on uh, nature machine intelligence that I'm really proud of because we took the cover and the editorial in this number. So we have the, we have the paper on the augmentation, but the cover and the editorial of the journal is on the paper. It's a comment on the paper. And we took also the cover of the of the journal itself, and uh, we have uh, we are uh, we have uh, really uh, a common habit to make patents. We have um, I think like 15, 16 patents. Uh, you can search in Google, and this is a Google search. Uh, and uh, two of those generated uh, the existing we art uh, company. This is a book on augmentation that I just wrote with one of my former students. We are going from extra finger to, to, to extra arm. For example, this is a subject that is controlling, uh, this is one of our students, PhD student, uh, that is controlling the third arm. So we go from extra finger to extra arm by taking the agency of, uh, of the robot. This project, is become uh, an horizon project that we just won uh, last week and will be an effort of uh, 4,000, uh, 4 million, sorry, 500, uh, 600,000 uh, euros uh, founded by Horizon Europe. And I am uh, honored to be the coordinator. Uh, and uh, there is uh, Siena, there is IT, and there is a Karlsruhe, you know, Fondazione. It's mainly on, on patients. So we are mainly working on uh, stroke patients and uh, tetraplegic uh, subjects. Okay? So thank you for your attention, and I'm ready for answers to your questions.